Hello, everybody. Spider here, the Five Card Podcast, coming to you once again. Being joined by Jimmy the Brick Flick, my man. How are you, bro? Doing good, man. Always enjoy breaking down these LFA cards. No, no, by all means, man. And I enjoy your company, man. Thank you for chiming in and uh, giving us your thoughts. Uh, this is going to be for the Legacy Fighting Alliance 131 card going down this Friday, of course. It's going to be at the Oshkosh Arena in Oshkosh, uh, Wisconsin, man. Uh, I'm going to go through the prelims, and then we're going to go into the main card. Uh, but going right into it, man, Edwin Jimenez, 6-1. and one. This is going to be a prelim for an amateur bout, 3-3 minute rounds, taking on Randy uh, Santiago. Uh, of course, uh, as an amateur fighter yourself, man, I mean, what are what are some good tips for, for fighters out there looking to get into mixed martial arts? Hey, man, starting off with LFA uh, in the amateur, you know, is great. No matter how many fights you have, uh, the high level that they have, sending more fighters to the UFC than anybody. If you can get on their platform as an amateur, that is amazing. Uh, and just to get into the fight game and starting out as an amateur, uh, it's very smart to do. Don't go pro right off the bat. Even if you wrestled in college or collegiate, I say get some experience with the amateur level first and make your way up. No, no, by all means, man. And that's uh, spoken from uh, somebody that, you know, went up the ranks himself, man. It means a lot, bro. Um, our second bout, man, we're going to have Jenna Williams uh, taking on Mariah Hernan Henderson. Uh, this is the only uh, female bout on the card. Of course, it's in the amateur ranks at 115 pounds. Um, going up to the next prelim, we have Christy Tiangansko. When I shot that up, I'm sorry, it's two female cards. Uh, taking on Leslie Hernandez. Of course, it's going to be at 115 pounds as well. Uh, lighter weight classes, man. I mean, a lot of people kind of down on them because uh, there's less action when it comes to knockouts or KOs. But, um, I mean, being a life fighter, you know, fighter yourself, man, I mean, what are some of the good things for the for the lower weight classes that people should be uh, looking out for? Uh, if you're a fighter coming up, female or male, when you watch these smaller fighters, they have to be more technical. They might not have the power to knock out somebody. So you see more technique used. You see more things that you can utilize or something that you don't do based on the fact that they got to use their technique to be able to – prevail to stick out you know as a uh lighter fighter and uh that's what you see at these lighter weight classes no i mean definitely man one of the things uh i mean of course knockouts are still there uh due to uh knees or maybe even elbows i mean depending right but i mean but yeah man i mean that's very well said bro uh the main one on the prelims is going to be nick plain taking on tristan overvig uh both two and oh undefeated man i mean um this is going to be a pro bout in the uh, prelim card, uh, of course, man, I mean, there's a lot of pressure because nobody wants that L. But, um, I mean, well, what are your thoughts, man? I mean, going undefeated on there, you think it's a lot of pressure from both guys? Well, yeah, and you're on the LFA card. Uh, both of them are undefeated. The guy that gets the win here most likely will make it to the main card on the next fight, uh, staying undefeated. The guy that loses might still have an opportunity to get on the main card depending on how the fight goes if we have a war a good back and forth you know uh if not a loss could you know get you kicked out of the promotion you know right now you're probably just a one fight deal you know not signing a four fight deal yet or anything with lfa so you're going to look out there to make a statement take somebody's O, and hopefully make it to the main card on ufc fight pass no, yeah, and one of the things, uh, like you said, man, I mean, when being on this platform like this, this big, especially, I mean, they're not on the UFC Fight Pass, but uh, you have an opportunity to be seen by a lot of people. So, of course, you want to go out there and put on the show, right? Oh, yeah, most definitely. They live stream them on their Facebook, and they have a big following over at LFA, too, so. No, no, by all means, bro. Now, we're going to go on to the main card, uh, starting off with Gary Conco, 4-1, and one, taking on uh, David Evans, 4-1. and one. Now, 145-pound weight division, uh, both guys the same record, man. I mean, it kind of goes back to uh, to what we talked about earlier. I mean, of course, the first bout on the card, so I expect fireworks. But at the same time, you don't want to go too crazy and uh, leave an opening, right? Oh, yeah. Both of these guys, if you look at them, the, they're coming up on 25, 30 fights. And you're like, well, they're four and one. Well, Gary's four and one as a professional, but he's eight and eleven as an amateur. And if you look at his amateur record, you're like eight wins, eleven losses. That's a lot of losses. Well, like he said he's on the amateur level. You can lose as much as you want on the amateur level, as long as you're getting experience. And right. that's what he's doing. He was getting experience before he went to this pro level. Uh, he lost early in his pro career. He's on a three fight win streak, uh, but he did. Uh, 
his last win was versus a guy that was nine and 18, nine wins and 18 losses. It's a lot of experience that you're uh, of the opponent, but just a lot of losses too. So he picked up that win though. And then you got Evans over here. He's coming off of his first loss, so you know he wants a win. He was 4-0. and Now he's 4-1. Uh, and uh, He was on a four-fight winning streak before that loss, and he was 12-6 and as an amateur. So these guys got a lot of experience, and there's a reason they're kicking off the card. No, I mean, yeah, by all means, man. I mean, I'm pretty sure the matchmaker saw fireworks, so of course he put them on first, man, because uh, UFC Fight Pass, man. I mean, that's where you want to be right now. Uh, going up one, we got Keegan Genrich, uh, 155, taking on Austin Luncheon. Uh, three and two versus a five and one, 155 pounds. Um, for, th- for about like this, would you see them going into the bigger show, which is the UFC, at a lighter weight? Or do you think they would kind of test the, the waters right now and, and see where they go in a uh, fight career? Uh, well, looking at their records and their experience, I think they're going to need a couple more fights. Uh, they have a chance to work their way up for the LFA title for sure. Uh, Keegan, he's three and two. He is on a one fight win streak. Um, he's had some tough competition and uh, he's even fought Evan Elder that just got signed to the UFC a couple weeks ago on short notice. Um, so he hasn't shied away from competition and he went four and oh as an amateur. Uh, so the guys took some tough fights as a professional. Uh, so I like Keegan and it's a great matchup against Austin, which is five and one. And his only loss being in LFA. And he also has a three and one amateur record. So both of these guys know what it feels like to lose. Uh, Both of them uh, have fought tough competition. And I don't think uh, either one of them wants to take a loss here. So I think it's going to be a great fight. No, yeah, by all means, man. Uh, Going one up, we're going to go into the heavier classes. This is at 185 pounds. Of course, we have Roland Dunlap. Uh, three and zero, uh, nicknamed the Dream, of course, taking on Hansa Sa- Salem, uh, Bellator veteran, uh, to throw it out there. But he's five and four. Um, I mean, both coming from experience, man. I mean, of course, the three and zero. You know, we talked about getting that loss. You know, pressure, man. Talk, talk, talk to us about pressure, man. What's what's been your experience with that? Uh, yeah, rolling three and zero. Um, he's had two fights in LFA already, uh, so he's got that LFA experience. Like you said, his opponent is a Bellator vet. Didn't win in Bellator, but did fight on that stage. Um, Roland's also 6-1 and one as an amateur. So he's experienced the loss before going pro, which I think is very smart. Um, I think he knows what he's doing here. He's about midway up on the LFA card, so a win here can really bump him up. And Hamzua is 5-4 and four on a two-fight losing streak. Uh, was 1-0 and oh as an amateur before going pro. Uh, I think he trains at a great gym. He's got a good experience, and uh, I'm excited to see what he does at LFA for his first fight over. Oh, yeah. It's going to be his debut on the promotion, man, so we'll, we'll see, man. I mean, it's going to be on the UFC Fight Pass, of course, like I mentioned, so definitely don't miss it. Uh, next one up, man. I know I'm going to shop out this name. Uh, Mektipek uh, Ulu, 170 pounds, taking on Jalen Fuller. Uh, both guys 6-1. and one. Uh, Fuller, I believe, was a returning uh, LFA uh, fighter, man. So, uh, Mekti Book, of course, the guy's uh, from Asia, man. I mean, he's fighting all over the uh, Pacific, you know, gotten experience uh, in international waters or international lands, uh, making yeah. his debut in LFA, man. So, what, what are you thinking on this one? Man, Yulu's last win was versus an 8-1 and one guy, too. Uh, yeah. So, I like that. You know, he fought some good competition coming over to LFA. But he said it's, it's hard to find – uh, much on him. Um, he looks solid. He's got a couple belts in his picture as well. So wherever he's been fighting, he's been winning and doing it well. Uh, Julian, uh, he's six and one with his only loss being in LFA. Uh, one and zero as an amateur. Uh, I think it's a great matchup, and the winner here is going to be uh, knocking on the door for the 170 title in LFA. No, no, for sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the way they're pushing it, man. So looking forward to it. Of course, the welterweight division is a hot one, man. Uh, going one up, this is going to be the uh, co-main event. We have Tim Hilly, uh, Hiley, 8-3, 185 pounds, taking on Darius Flowers, 10-5. Uh, and five. I mean, talk about experience, man. Both guys have already uh, been fighting uh, for a few years. You know, a lot of fights, a lot of uh, tough wins, great loss, uh, tough losses, great wins. But give us a breakdown on this one. Uh, I can give you a good breakdown on old Tim Hilly, man. Uh, I actually commentated his last fight. Uh I got a little good and a little bad here for Tim. 
so hopefully if he sees this, he don't hate on me. I like the dude. Uh, nothing but love. Uh, he just broke a three-fight losing streak uh, in his last fight where he fought in freestyle cage fighting down here in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Uh, he did miss weight pretty bad at 185. Uh, I don't really know what he logged in at, but I think he came in the, around the 190, 191 mark. Uh, um, not sure. After his win, uh, he did really good defending the takedown. Uh, he fought a very gamed opponent, and uh, but his weight really helped him in that fight. And after the fight, another fight almost broke out because his opponent didn't like the fact that he was very big. His opponent took the fight still, took some of his money, uh, but took a loss. And at right. the end of the day, I think the loss hurt him more. Tim looked great, though. His stand-up looked solid. He was coming in off of a loss in boxing as well that he lost by a decision. He did really well in. And uh, now he's got a tough fight back in the LFA. Uh, he fought Brendan Allen in the LFA in one of his LFA losses. This will be his fifth fight in LFA. And uh, his opponent is 3-1 and one in LFA on a two-fight win streak has a 11 and five amateur record and even has a win over Adam Stella, the guy that got knocked out by uh, Uriah Hall and the spinning back kick on uh, the ultimate fighter. Uh, sure. So this is a great co-main event. Oh yeah, man. Like you posted, it, man. I mean, being a, the tough, the weight classes, when it comes to uh, dropping weight, man, I mean, there's a science behind it. You've done it for years uh, coming from wrestling. I mean, what, what are some good tips on, on, on some of these guys? I mean, what should be, they be doing before they start cutting weight? Man, it all starts here, man. It all starts here. And uh, I went back over to the gym a couple months ago. I pop in and train. And one of the guys that was getting ready to fight is an amateur fighter, a kickboxer, too. He's only got a couple fights. And I had already noticed, like, he was running. He's getting his work in. And, like, he had already grabbed the scale before I got there. When he got back from running, he was grabbing the scale. He wanted to weigh before he leaves. And leave that scale alone, guys. Like, that that that's your world's worst nightmare. Uh, the best thing I think I could say that I found out, I weigh in the morning and I weigh at night, two times a day. You know, you weigh in the morning. And when you get up, and I'll weigh before I use the bathroom because usually you get a good pee in. Sometimes you poo. So, uh, I'll weigh before I use the bathroom, you know, I mentally, you know, I, that way it's going to come off before I start drinking, start eating, start working out. And then after my hard workout, I like to eat dinner before I weigh, you know, and cause you mess with your mind. How much can I eat? How much can I not eat? You know, eat what you want to eat, you know, enjoy yourself as long as you train hard and just don't battle with that skill. You know, it's all mental. It's all toughness. Cause once you make weight, you're not as hungry as you really think. <laughs> there you go man now jumping up of course we're gonna go into the main event this is gonna be uh right up your alley man this is gonna be for the bantamweight title with 135 pounds uh we have daniel argueta seven and no undefeated bro going against uh, diego silva 14 and six you know, your thoughts man all right the daniel undefeated thing i like yeah. the guy i love the guy but my he should be seven and one you know he did lose on the ultimate fighter I hate that they do not count those as loss. It's the same reason Bryce Mitchell is undefeated as well. Um, I mean, I fought on the Tuesday Night Contender, and that's on my record. You know, I know it's different, but, I mean, if it's a three-round fight, um, I think we should, you know, have this on these guys' records. But, yes, he's undefeated. Coming off the show, he fought a 12-0 guy and beat him. That's why he's earned his uh, LFA 135 title shot here. He lost to Ricky uh, from down there in Houston, Texas on the alternate fighter. I believe Ricky ended up winning the show, right? Got yes, it. lost to the winner. You know, he's won his last two LFA fights. Uh, if anybody deserves a title shot, it's Daniel for sure. Definitely. Now, his opponent, Diego, I really, I don't know if it was my phone was messing up, but I couldn't get his fights to pop up. Out of everybody, uh, I know he's the number two fighter in uh, New England. He's number 11 in the U.S. So whoever he's been fighting, he's fighting good competition. And I think his losses probably at a higher weight class to good competition. Uh, I think he's probably a solid 135er. And uh, I think the winner of this will be, you know, probably going to the Tuesday night contender or, or the UFC, especially if they win in good fashion. No, definitely, man. I mean, that is a car for LFA 131. Uh, Jimmy Flake, man, tell us what's going on with uh, this book, man. When, when is it due? Man, we're working on it. I want to 
uh, I really told myself, uh, I'll be 32 in September. And so I'm really going to work on it to hopefully, uh, have the release around my birthday. I want to release it around September of 2022. Uh, I want to open up a gym hopefully this year in 2022. I want to travel, do seminars. Uh, if you want to follow me, please follow me on Instagram at the brick MMA. You can type in, uh, www.thebrickmma.com on Facebook and it'll take you straight to my fan page also on Google. And, uh, just give me a follow. If you have any questions, message me. I appreciate all the support. And hopefully I'll have more info on that book getting out soon. No, no, by all means, man. Now, you had done your second uh, commentary gig, man. This was for a boxing bout. I believe it, it involved the uh, the police department, right? Uh, it was boxing and MMA. Uh, it's the uh, okay. Cops versus the Firefighters here in Oklahoma. It's a fundraiser. The cops uh, raise money for the Special Olympics, and the firefighters raise money for the burn camp. Uh, so it's a big charity event here. Uh, there's over 10,000 people in the stadium at the BOK. Uh, it was a great charity event. Uh, a lot of them guys come out just to fight, man, because they're a cop or they're a firefighter. Uh, they had their first pro uh, cop versus firefighter main event fight. It was awesome. The crowd was electric. It was an awesome commentating gig. I had Johnny Hendricks right there. Uh, sure. guy from the radio station, uh, 97.5 KMOD, uh, uh, Corbin from there. Uh, it was great, man. It was a good experience and it was live on Facebook the whole time. Man. And, uh, your, your, uh, your sidekick that night, man. I mean, you talk, talk about the rig. I mean, how, how was he, man? Were you able to talk to the guy like on and off? Oh yeah. Me and Johnny. Yeah. Uh, he's a cop, uh, you know, down by Dallas, Texas. There's a little town over there. I'm not for sure the town. I can't remember it now, but he says he's, you know, he's a cop. He's a good guy, man. We talked fights. We talked, you know, our experiences. And, you know, obviously, Johnny really don't know me, you know. So, you know, I told him about the first time we met each other and, you know, and all kinds of stuff. So it, it was cool, man. It was like another dream coming true just on the commentary table. No, yeah. And, I mean, both of you guys come from wrestling, man. So, of course, you, got, you had that to talk about, right? Oh, yeah. It was great, man. We had a blast. Uh, man, well, this is our, our installment for the uh, the Brick Breakdown, of course. Once again, man, I appreciate you, and uh, we'll be in touch, my man. Yes, sir. We'll talk soon. Yes, sir. Everybody out there, make sure to subscribe, follow up, follow the man, follow the YouTube channel. Until next time.